when you hear that music. Who's here, right? When it comes up on your feed. We're back. Here we are. I'm Lisa. I'm Jerry. And we are here with another real estate market update. Yeah, we'll get our top story today is five tips for home sellers. Yes, we are definitely in a seller's market, so we thought, well, let's do some tips for sellers. And what's the, we're, we thought we'd start out with the most important thing, number one. That's right. And number one is price it right. Price it right. Even in this market where they're getting crazy overbids and over asking offers, um, it's still important that you price it right. The market will uh, push it up if it so warrants. Um, or the opposite of that is also true. If you put your house on the market and you're not getting any showings, then you are definitely overpriced. Um, or if you're getting showings and no offers, still that's an indication that you are overpriced. <laughs> yeah, pretty simple formula. No showings, no offers, overpriced, right? right? Yes. Yep. So once you get it in the sweet spot, when you get it priced right, you're gonna get showings and offers, and that's what you're looking for. In fact, if it's priced extremely well, you're gonna get multiple offers and get into a bidding war. Yep, and you may not even, this market right now, uh, they're saying nationally average, uh, you're getting three offers nationally um, on average right now in this market. So it's a great time to be a seller. Boy, no question about that. So it is very important to have it priced correctly and that's where we come into play. That's right. Number two, buyers want it move in ready. I mean, who doesn't, right? You want to just be able to move in and start living your life. But what does that mean to you as a seller? It means that you might want to take care of some, uh, some of the things that are going to be coming up uh, in the escrow process, like um, do some of the inspections, the home inspection, termite inspection, lateral sewer inspection, and get those things done up front so you can provide them to the buyer and it will, um, uh, I don't know the right word, like limit necessarily, but make your negotiations down the road a little easier when the buyer knows up front um, what the things are going to be on those inspections. Of course it does. And then, once you have the inspection, there's probably going to be some red flag issues on the inspection. So you'll probably want to go ahead and repair those. Save the receipts. That way you can you know, say, hey, here's the receipts. This is what we found. This is what we repaired. And let's go forward from there. I, I think Lisa is correct where it can put you in a situation where you're not going to renegotiate the deal, let's say, after they do a home inspection, after they do a termite inspection, after they do a electrical or plumbing inspection, a roof inspection. So it's going to put you in a much better place there. And it's also going to eliminate any gray area, any fear you might have of, oh my gosh, what have they found? And good time before we put it on the market if you have any unfinished pro uh, projects that you go ahead and finish those up. So we can help on all those as far as providing contractors and the right people for the right job. You know, some places in the United States, they do do all those things up front, like in the Bay Area here in California, they do have all those inspections online right up front. So it really, uh, we just had one where that closed the, this week where the seller did do all those inspections and provided them to us up front. So our buyer knew exactly, you know, what they were writing on in the condition. And it really made the whole transaction go much more smoothly. There were some other bumps in that road, but not those. <laughs> There's always bumps in the road. That's why we're always amazed that the process is pretty straightforward, but it's never simple. It's no. always complicated, and you don't know where those complications are going to come from. It is a very erratic array of challenges that come up, and the challenges are usually unique to that individual property. It's not something that we see over and over and over again. Oh my gosh, well, it's going to be this or it's going to be that. And sometimes it is, most of the time it's not. Well, and the unique properties, and you also have a unique set of sellers and buyers on every deal, so you never know where all three of those things, the property, the buyer, the seller, are all going to cross paths somewhere in the transaction. Yes, it's always different every time because, you know, you've got the buyers that are wanting the property but don't want to buy something that's going to be, let's say, a money pit or a headache in their future. And that's why they really want a turnkey. 
That's right. They do. They want to come in, move in, bring their toothbrush, their clothes, and just start enjoying life. And also keep in mind, you know, you're selling a lifestyle. You're not just selling a property. So remember when you bought that property that you're now looking to sell, you had some specific needs and ideas in mind. And the reason you picked that property was probably more an emotional decision. Uh, so always, you know, remember that you're not just selling a piece of property, but you're selling a lifestyle. So one of the reasons that, you know, model homes on new construction, they're always furnished because they just show Better, of course, there's never any clutter in a model home, um, but they're selling that emotion when you walk in. They're selling that lifestyle. So you are too if you're getting ready to sell a home. It is emotional. I mean, you, you vision raising your kids there, or growing old there, buying your first house, and oh my gosh, this is going to be our first house forever, no matter how many houses you buy and sell. It's just an emotional ride the whole way. In fact, let's call it an emotional roller coaster at times but definitely an emotional ride, a good one. That's right, number three, be prepared to negotiate. You know, when getting a, getting a buyer into escrow and negotiating back and forth on the first uh, set of, of issues and negotiations up front is only the first step on negotiations. Once you um, negotiate that into an accepted offer and into an escrow, um, there is more negotiation to come. It is. And You've got to be sensible about the negotiations. Let's say you have a million dollar property, and let's say you're trading up, you're going to be buying a million five property. Then all of a sudden it comes down to where about $10,000 away on a repair, or let's say a roof repair. That's what it's going to cost to repair it. So now the buyers are asking for either a $10,000 credit, or let's say they want to reduce the price by $10,000. So now they're offering $990,000. And you say, you know what? No way. I, I'm not going to give the ten thousand. Well, then you lose your million five house. The equation there is, if you gave up ten thousand there, and you still closed your million five house, and properties continue to appreciate. I think nationally it's about three percent a year. Now it's not every year. I mean, you know, that's over averages. The last twenty years, and or the last year in our area has been twenty percent. So. We know we've got some less than 20% years coming. So you buy the million five property and it appreciates, you get your 10,000 back almost instantaneously. So I know it sounds difficult. Once again, it's very emotional right there. Hey, we understand. It's not like you want to give money away. It's that you want to make money or make the right decisions. That's probably the most important thing you can do is just consistently make the right decisions. That's right, and we're always there to help gu uh, guide you uh, and try and help mitigate some of that because it, be, it can be a lot. It can feel like a lot when you're making a lot of decisions at once. So that's um, repairs, inspections, appraisal issues we've been having right now because the market has moved up so quickly that there aren't necessarily a lot of closed comparables to use for the appraisals. So appraisals have been coming in low. Um, and conditions, we've had conditions been called out on appraisals lately more than we have seen. So there's another um, opportunity to negotiate. Um, and then closing dates, you know, things uh, have a tendency, they're moving a little bit here on closing dates again, because the lenders are overwhelmed trying to get all these refis and purchase mo uh, money mortgages done. Um, but we're always there to walk you through it. That's right. We're there. We're the, here. We're here. We're here right now. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, guys. We have, um, you know, Destiny, Aaron, Susan, thank you guys for being on. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, just put them here in the comments. Um, number four of our five tips for home sellers is upgrade what counts most. Like we said at the top of the show, you want to mitigate that list that we all make as buyers. You walk into a property, you start your list. Oh my goodness, I need to fix this or that or look at that or this or that. You want to make that list as short as you can. So you want to hit your easy wins. And some of those are, number one, clean. Just make sure it's clean. Even if it's a dated property, it's grandma's house that you're getting ready to sell and there's beautiful 50-year-old wallpaper on every wall, you just want it to be clean, decluttered and clean. Um, the easiest thing to do is to maybe paint it. If there's some things that you need to paint, a white or light neutral color, that's, again, the simplest ways. Maybe update some fixtures, light fixtures, um, and we can 
um, help you guide you through that on what makes the most sense and the most value to help you get the most money for your home, um, spending the least amount. I would think paint's number one. Paint seems to just cover a lot of stuff and it brings it into the 2020s for <laughs> sure, you know, because 10 years ago a lot of yellows were in, a lot of people had red walls, accent walls, there was all kinds of colors. But in the last decade it has really changed and everything has either gone to white, all the neutral palettes are what appeals to most people. And most people think, oh my gosh, if I paint, it's just going to be a huge hassle. And that's a hassle, but it's not as big as you think. Right. Again, you're appealing to emotion. This is an emotional process. Uh, people don't like to be sold, they like to buy. And what do they make those decisions on whatever they're going to buy? It's emotional. So we always want to try and keep appealing to that. So number five, kind of tag right onto that, is keep your emotions in check. That it can be a very emotional process when you're selling a family home that you have maybe raised your kids in, or maybe it's your parents' home that you were raised in. And uh, we always try and um, keep you focused on, on the next step, on where you're going. Look forward, stay focused on where you're going and not where you've been, um, especially when you get into a real estate uh, selling of a, of a family home or a property. Yeah, so what's the easiest way to keep your emotions in check? Oh, you're asking me. I do this for a living professionally, three generations. I am not the best real estate buyer. <laughs> yes, uh, just be calm. It'll all work out. That's, yeah, that's his department. When we're buying property, it's always you know an emotional ride for me too. It is. Uh huh. Yes, Lisa's was... the first one to say, "Oh, we overpaid," and then ten years later, we look like geniuses. Yep. Well, that's always the way, right? When you're buying anything. Buyers think they overpaid and sellers think they sold it for too little. So you're normal when you feel that way. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know you're in the right spot. <laughs> that's right. And remember, um, headlines are usually negative and they are there to terrify, not clarify. So the headlines have been all over the map. Um, I read them and stay up to date on all the real estate news amongst multiple sites every day. And I tell you these headlines, and then you go read the article, and it's really not. So remember, don't just read the headlines, especially real estate ones, because they are not there to, to calm you. They are there to terrify you. So if you want to clarify your situation and you have specific questions or needs, um, give us a call. and Let's talk about what's happening in the market. Uh, wherever your property is, is a micro market to, to exactly where it is. Well, of course, you know, years ago, they used to say in the media, if it bleeds, it leads. That means, you know, if there was some major accident or something that they can put on. Now, it leads if it can terrify us. So, <laughs> okay, this will scare the heck out of them. Oh, let's, let's use that. Well, that, that slippery slope seems to be very slippery because, I mean, seriously, read some of the headlines. It's just frightening. Oh, my gosh. It is. So, that's our top story today. Yeah, so knowledge it gives you power and gives you the clarity to make the right decisions for your family. So we are always here to answer your real estate questions, and we appreciate you watching. You can always find us and visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, it's a wrap.